The specific heat of something refers to how much energy it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of whatever it is you're talking about by a degree Celsius. Um, so I, I often like to give the example of uh, kind of a car and sand and a beach, right? So picture yourself driving to a beach, you drive there in your car, you go to walk down to the water and you walk on the sand, the sand's really hot, right? And that's because the sun has been beating down on it. However, whenever you get to the water, the water is not nearly as hot as the sand is. And that's because the specific heat of the water and the sand are going to be very different. And similarly, when you get back to your car, if you were to put your hand on the car after it's been sitting out in the sun for a few hours, right, you, you could burn yourself because the car would be really, really hot. Again, the specific heat of the substances between like the aluminum of the car, the sand that's at the beach, and the water at the beach are all going to be really different. Um, water is going to have the highest of those specific heat, meaning it's going to take more heat. It's going to take more energy to raise a gram of the substance by a degree, whereas either the sand or the aluminum is going to take a lot less energy. So it's not going to take as much heat, in this case from the sun, to raise a temperature by a degree Celsius. Um, so there's a formula here that you don't need to memorize because it's given to you on your formula sheet. You just have to be able to use the formula. Um, Q is equal to MC delta T. So Q is going to be heat. So this is going to be uh, calories or joules or something like that. Um, the specific heat is represented by C. So the specific heat is going to have a unit of calories per gram degree Celsius, or joules per gram degree Celsius. So in other words, it's going to be how much heat, right, is needed to raise a gram by a degree Celsius. Um, M is going to be the mass that's going to be in grams, because your units have to match what you have there in a specific heat. And then delta T is going to be the change in temperature. Now, anytime you see delta something, um, so delta T is going to be the temperature final, minus temperature initial. So it's always going to be the final minus the initial temperature. So in theory, if you're cooling something, you would have a negative delta T because your final temperature would be lower than your initial temperature. So let's take a look at um, some examples of specific heat. So obviously you don't need to me uh, memorize this table. And if I give you a problem on specific heat on your test, uh, you'll be given the actual specific heats. So aluminum, right, that's your car, right, 0.2 calories per gram degree Celsius. Sand, 0.2 calories per gram degree Celsius, right? So both of those are very similar. And now if we go down here and look at water at one, you can see it's about five times higher, which is why water, again, doesn't get as hot as those other things do. Okay, so... Let's look at a problem here and let's figure out how we would solve this problem. So how many calories are needed to heat a pot of 1600 grams of water from 25 to 100 degrees Celsius? So if we go to our equation, Q is equal to MC delta T, uh, this problem is asking how many calories. So calories is going to be heat. So that's going to be our Q. So we were trying to solve for Q in this case. So how many calories are needed to heat a pot of 1,600 grams? So Q is equal to 1,600 grams. That's going to be the mass. Um, the C comes from 1,600 grams of water, right? Water at 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So this tells me it's going to be liquid water, right? Water liquid. And I need to use this number right here, which is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. So I'm going to do one calorie per gram degree Celsius times delta T. So we talked about on the previous slide, delta T is equal to T final minus T initial. So the final is going to be 100 degrees Celsius. The initial is going to be 25 degrees Celsius. So that means delta T is going to be 75 degrees Celsius. So let's put that number in here. And then we can solve it. But what I want to point out here is just like any of our other problems, we can cancel out units. Grams cancels with grams. Degree Celsius cancels with degree Celsius. 
and that's going to leave us with calories. So if we take 1,600 times 75 times calories, that gets us to 120,000 calories. Um, that's a really large number, so one thing that we could do if we wanted to is we could convert that number to kilocalories, right? So you have 1,000 calories per 1 kilocalorie. Our calories cancel. This would also be able to be written as 120 kilocalories. So those two are the same as each other, and either of them would be appropriate for your final answer.